Good evening, beautiful people. It's your favorite real estate agent, Sierra Thurman, and I'm here to help you build a legacy that moves you. I'm really excited to have Ms. Mika with us. She is a certified personal trainer. Is that right, Mika? Yes, I am. How are I'm you doing I'm with SCW. How are you? Okay. Surviving this COVID. Girl, aren't we all, aren't we all trying to figure it out? So I really wanted to have this session of building and bonding because I think it's important that right now we shine light on local business owners. It's important that we support you during this time. And it's a time for us to still come together even though we, you know, are apart. Yeah. Well, I definitely appreciate this platform. Like, this is really awesome. You always do great things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Mika. Thanks, girl. Um, so I know you personally, um, but some of our viewers do not. So do you want to just share a little bit as far as a little bit about your personal life and who is the woman behind the business? Sure. Uh, my government is Lamika Edwards. Um, I'm a mother of two boys, 23 and 19. Mm -hmm. Um, I am a certified personal trainer. I've um, started my business back in 2014. Um, I'm also a police officer. Yes, ma'am. And, um, I'm also a lupus warrior and I actually started my health journey because of my health issue okay. and having lupus is a, is a challenge because your body is attacking itself. Hmm. So the medicines that I take also makes the body act crazy, weight gain, weight loss, all kind of things. And so I wanted to, I didn't want to be like the statistics that they say when you become a police officer, they like, oh, make sure you get a bigger size because you're going to get bigger. And I was yeah. like, oh, no, not me. Mm -hmm. Like, I began my journey in 2011 and I started out wearing a size 32. And I told the lady that I wanted a size 30. And she was like, you sure you don't want a 34? She like, most people get bigger, you know, not small. And I was like, well, I'm not going to be one of those people. I know that's right. And the next year I came in and instead of asking for a size 30, I needed a size 28. And she was like, oh my God. She was like, Ooh. girl, what you been doing? I was like, well, eating better, working out, you know what I'm saying? And she was like, you are one of the first people that I had to go down. Wow. Wow. You know? So that made me feel really good. Then my coworkers started noticing. They was like, what you been doing? Like, you get smaller. Exactly. You know? exactly. <laughs> so, you know, and I was like, just working out, going to different gyms, trying stuff out. Mm -hmm. Then I look like. I could do this myself. You know why I'm paying other people to do it when I had the ability and the adrenaline and the strength to do it on my own. So absolutely, I started, I started training myself. So and, let's uh, let's go back to that place. Well, for one, I want to say thank you for your service. It's definitely appreciated. I know you don't hear it often, um, but I really appreciate you and the work that you do. Um, inside of your business as well as you as a police officer so thank, thank you, you. Um, I want to just go back to that place and that space you were in where you decided you know what it's time for me to make a difference in my health journey and this is what I'm going to do take us back to that place when you first start like what was your mindset during that time um looking in the mirror it's the, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't look at themselves. You you got to look at yourself. You know what I'm saying? You can't talk about the next person until you talk about the person you stand back at. Right. You know? So I had to focus on myself and I didn't like what I saw. Okay. You know? It was like going to the stores, 
getting, you know, different size, like majority of the people was that size. So it was hard to find stuff. So when I got a smaller size, it was easier to find it because a lot of people was not that size. Mm. And also looking how my clothes fit, you know, they was, I was starting to look better to myself. I was feeling more confident. Mm. I was feeling stronger. I wasn't as tired. My yeah. skin was um, be, beginning to be clearer and stuff. So, and I felt better. And it was like, I loved it. You know, it was like, yeah. oh, okay, I'm doing something, you know, made me feel good. Absolutely. Now, how did that kind of like tie in with your health journey as far as the lupus is concerned? I know um, that you've had some health struggles in the past and uh, being more health conscious and aware of your nutrition and everything has to be a help. But what was that like as far as you wasn't just losing weight to look good, but essentially this was really something that was like life or death. It was definitely, definitely changing what I ate. Like I be, did more of a plant-based mm -hmm. diet and stuff. And um, I limited the amount of meat I was eating. I limited the added sugars, mm -hmm. sodium and stuff, processed food. I was cooking more, meal okay. prepping and stuff, drinking more water. I don't drink pop. I don't drink any carbonated drinks. Oh, wow. I all together. Um, I don't eat candy bars and stuff like that. Um, I don't indulge in potato chips and stuff. So like a lot of junk and processed food, I try to eliminate completely and find healthier options because you can still eat you know, potato chips, you just have to look at the ingredients. The okay. less ingredients, the more healthy it is. And my goal is to try to buy stuff that doesn't have over eight ingredients. And if you can't pronounce it, you shouldn't eat it. <laughs> I heard that. That makes perfect <laughs> sense. What is that? Right. Like you put in your body. Pronounce the ingredients, you should not consume them. So what about someone who's watching in right now saying that's great that you were able to cut back on so many things. Was that a gradual change for you or was it something that you just put your foot down, make the decision to just say, you know what, these are the changes I'm making. You have to be mentally ready because if you're not mentally ready, it ain't going to matter what I say or anybody else say, mm -hmm. you know, for me, I had enough. It was like, you know what? I wanted better for myself. And my doctors told me, they was like, okay, you keep eating this type of way, you're not going to be here long enough to see your kid get older. Okay. That was a wake up call for me. Because wow. I wanted to be here for my kids. And Absolutely. because of the type of illness I had, my body attacks itself. So mm -hmm. therefore, I had to make sure I put the right nutrition in my body because my body wasn't producing it for me. So I had to make sure that I had to do what I needed to do so I can be here. Mm -hmm. Because I'm no good if I'm not good to myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I appreciate you saying that. I mean, it had to be tough, but at the same time, it was kind of like, this is life or death. I need to do what I have to do to be here for my family. So that's definitely motivating. But if nothing else, if you haven't found a why, that's definitely a reason to say, yeah. you know, why I'm doing this and why I want to make these changes. So how has your business, um, I guess when it first started, let's think before this whole COVID situation was upon us, before the global pandemic, how was your business at that time? Uh, my my business was actually had started picking up. Um, I was getting more clients right before it happened because again, you're coming off of almost winter break. You mm -hmm. know, summer is about to be approaching, so everybody wants to work out. You know, mm -hmm. everybody got their income tax, so they like, hey, I want to be, you know, right. I'm ready to get, get this six month body, you know, before the summer hit. 
Mm -hmm. And so things had started picking up because that's around the time. It's like right after the new year, everybody wants to work out. Yeah, so, absolutely. So that's, that's and for those and for those that don't know, you are a personal trainer and you usually work at, out at your home. Do you go to your client's home? How is um I guess the sessions conducted? Okay. Um well yeah, majority of the time I do work out at home because of the hours that I work. So it's it's a little more convenient for me for them to come to my house because I have everything there. Mm -hmm. Now, if they want me to come to their house, it's a little more for travel and bringing my equipment to their house, unless they have their own equipment and I okay. can show them how to use the equipment there. Okay. But I have traveled to some of my clients' residents and worked out with them and their family, actually. Oh. So it, it has been beneficial in that way as well. Uh, when the weather is nice, I love to go outdoors because the mm -hmm. oxygen outside is awesome. Breathe it in, vitamin D from that the fresh sunlight. air, mm -hmm. you know, the so sun. I love to work out and I use different equipment at the park because okay. your body is a machine in itself. You right. know, and I tell people, if you can't lift yourself, why are you trying to lift weight? Oh, come on now. Yeah, lift that own body weight. That's enough you weight. Know, yes. I am like, if you yeah. can't lift your legs up and you want to do leg curls, what you doing? Exactly, exactly. Like, you got to get rid of the body fat first before you try to build muscle because then you're going to build muscle on top of fat and then you're going to be walking around with a six pack looking like you're pregnant still. Right, right. So, that makes sense. That absolutely makes sense. So how would you say the pandemic has impacted your business? How has it shifted it or changed it oh, anyway? Oh, well, with the stay-at-home order and six feet, you know, no contact with people, it, it was it was rough, you know what I'm saying? Could mm -hmm. nobody come work out, you know, everything had to be online and stuff. So it was, it, I went from having, you know, everyday classes to nothing. Wow, wow. So, because people were scared to come over and then my, my almost all my clients know I have lupus. So mm -hmm. I'm a high risk. Yeah. So they yeah. didn't want, you know what I'm saying, to jeopardize my Your health, health mm -hmm. by coming over and working out and stuff like that. So in which I appreciate, you know, that they cared enough to say, Hey, no, you know, I know that you have lupus and you can't fight this off. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. So that was, you know, it was great that I that we have social media. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, because that's how I was able to still communicate with my clients, still do my training online and stuff. So oh, nice. I've been doing. Um, so you've been doing online trainings. Um, is it live sessions? Is it recorded? Um, how can, if someone was interested in getting fit, losing some weight at, during this time, how could they like join you or like your nutrition program? How does it work? Okay. So for the, the, um, online workout, I do via zoom. If you want it like that day where you can see me, we're interacting and talking. Or I can record workout, show you how to do the movement, and then you can play it back later at your convenience. Oh, okay. So I, because everybody's schedule is different. Because I have, like, clients that I, um, from different states. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, I'll record the workout, show them how to do the movement correctly, and then they can do it on their own. Okay. So, it's accountability as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And then, like with the nutrition, like I send out like grocery lists, meal plans, meal options, stuff like that, recipes. So I send that to my clients as well. Okay, okay. So we had a couple questions come in, and I want to make sure I get to those. Uh, we have some someone asked, "How do you stay in shape?" So it's one thing to lose weight, but a lot of times people yo-yo, so they lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight. Well, how, what would you say is your advice for how do you stay in shape? 
stay in shape, you definitely have to be consistent. Mm -hmm. So like when I had first started working out, I was working out maybe six days a week. And then once I reached my goal where I was content with where I was at, I scaled it back. But you also made sure that I was eating right. Mm -hmm. Eating is 80% of what you're doing. Because if you don't eat right, your workouts is not going to matter. Absolutely. So you have to make sure you're eating right in order to stay with your goal. Now, if you're going to fluctuate because that's just how nature is. You know, each month is going to be different because you can experience something where your stress level can go up and cortisone builds in, which is produces body fat. Oh, so, wow. you know, it can change, but don't be you know, don't get depressed about it because it's life. You know what I'm saying? So in order to maintain, you have to look at what you're consuming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's even with, with your job. It ain't just about food. It's about what you're consuming in your mind too. Ooh. You don't know, because that matters. If Again, losing weight, working out, it's a mental thing because you have to be mentally able to do it because if your mental is not there then you can just be out yeah you working out but you're not feeling it Absolutely. you know and working i love working out it's a stress release for me you know mm -hmm. so so would you say it, that's what part of easy, your but it's, it's, it's necessary would you say that's a part of your fitness philosophy as far as being mentally tough and mentally strong for the journey oh, okay. that you're embarking on? Yeah, you you definitely, your mental definitely has to be strong in order to maintain because that's how so many people do yo-yos because, again, life, things happen. You know what I'm saying? Girl, listen. Because like, I, even for me, for two years, I lived in the hospital. You know what I'm saying? And, but I still worked out. Because that was my stress relief. Everybody is not mentally strong in that nature. So they have to find alternatives, whether it's reading a book, mm -hmm. riding a bike, you know what I'm saying, walking, going to therapy. You yeah. know, sometimes you, you, you have to get it out. You have to find a way to get it out. Because if not, it's going to consume you. And then you go look up and you to gain 5, 10, 20 pounds. You right, know, because you're emotional eating, you know, yeah. and it's like you you have to <laughs> you I, you have to find. I got a confession to make. I'm an emotional <laughs> eater, so you preaching to the choir right now, honey. I, everything you saying right now, I'm like, yep, check, yep, check. <laughs> so that's actually something that I'm definitely working on the emotional eating part, and it is definitely a process. It seems it like is. just when I think I got it. Something knocks the wind out of me, and I'll be like, Nope, I ain't got it. So, and, and people don't understand that's just like that's just like an addict, you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, Mika, yes. I literally it was explaining this to a friend of mine the other day. I said, Because I know my triggers, because I know I'm an emotional eater, I can't have certain food in my presence, in my house. It can't be around me because I associate it with just like you are addicted to alcohol, just like yep. you're addicted to drugs. If I am a recovering alcoholic, even though I'm going to these AA meetings and I'm trying to be strong, you can't be drinking around me or I can't be around a room full of alcohol or I'm yep. going to want to consume the alcohol. Yep. Same thing with food. It is an addiction it is. for some people. And that emotional eating aspect really kicks in. Like, I don't know. Do they have something like that? Like an AA or something they, for they emotional eating? Do. Like, they actually do have um, therapy for emotional eaters. Really? You know, because, again, you have to get to the root of the problem. Yes. Me, I'm, I'm an emotional eater, too. I, I know that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, because I have been through so much with my health, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I know how I transform my body from looking like Professor Clump to, you know what I'm saying, almost 
<laughs> Buffy the Vampire. You yes, know? girl. So, that transformation was real, honey. I was just like, whoa. <laughs> Okay, whoa. You know, I mean, for those watching, we were actually in the academy together, and I must have looked up, and I said, who is this person, and where is Lamika? Like, you you had a complete transformation. I'm so proud of you. Like, I'm really proud of you, because that takes discipline. That yeah. takes consistency. That takes, when you won't feel like it, doing it anyway and yeah. that's something that most people aren't just equipped to do so i yeah. applaud you i really i really do i'm trying to get that drive back because i again like i said i was knocked down for a few years mm -hmm. literally i i literally lived in a hospital i was in the hospital every month for two years yeah you know so that takes a toll on on the body because yes, all yes, that medication they was pumping into me mm -hmm. on top of my own body attacking itself so like right now i'm trying to rebuild you know what i'm saying get my strength back because again like i said i wasn't able i wasn't at my best for the last two years so, so it's a little struggle today but um getting better i'm getting stronger and stuff so i'm I'm knocking on wood because this year i only been in the hospital three times even though it's only may but that's still good but still, that it is it is especially when you have become familiar with being there yeah. so that is that's excellent and speaking of medication um do you recommend any supplements because i know that i had a health scare earlier this year and I was forced to be put on some medication. Um, just maybe like a week or two ago, I was put, I was, I, they told me I can get off the medication. So I was like, thank you, Jesus. Now we got all these tests to run to make sure I can stay off the medicine. But I'm just wondering, I'm not a big person and I don't like to take medicine. Um, and in this case, I was forced to. Right. So is there anything as far as like supplements that you recommend to try to avoid it if possible I mean, of course i'm not saying like go against your doctor's orders listen right. to what your doctor is saying but sometimes you may just want to take a more natural approach so do you recommend supplements or anything like okay. that so like how i even got started was i started out with herbalife nutrition products which i still sell to this day um but i don't promote it like i used to because Right now, I can't use it because of my health issue, because oh, okay. of the ingredient. But okay. I still, like, if people want to buy it, I still sell it to those who want it. Like, I take the aloe. I still do the aloe vera because it's good for digestion okay. and also for bloating and stuff like that. But I'm, not, I'm unable to take the uh, meal replacement shake because some of them have soy in there and my body can't digest the soy. Okay, so, okay. But they do have a new one that's um, a vegan for the vegans, so which is good. So I'm grateful for that. So I, I haven't tried it yet, but I plan to try it. But um, what I do is, I, I hate taking pills. Mm -hmm. Because at mm -hmm. one point I was taking 25 pills a day. Wow. And... So right now, only thing I'm taking is my blood thinners because for some reason, I keep catching blood clots. I was Girl. in an accident, and ever since then, I keep catching blood clots. Girl, and me too. Me too. Like, and that's the medicine that I was crazy. literally just talking about. And it's hard because with blood thinners, you can't have vitamin K, which is one of the benefits you need you know what I'm saying, for weight loss and wow. just nutrition in itself, the spinach, the kale, the yeah. broccoli. You can't eat none of that stuff while you taking the cumidin, mm -hmm. you know, blood thinners because of the vitamin K. Right. So it's it's a challenge, you know, because it's like, okay, what I'm supposed to eat then? Exactly, exactly. And then I have, I developed... Well, that's actually... That's actually a good transition um, to jump into some of your nutrition tips and some of your fitness tips. So for those that are watching, if you wanted to give just a few tips as far as the nutrition is concerned and maybe like some fitness tips for someone who's interested in starting a health journey during this time, especially during this pandemic, 
because this is prime time. It's so easy for us because we're stuck in the house to yes. sit on the couch, eat junk food, watch TV all day, and not get any type of activity. So what type of tips or nutritional advice would you recommend? Okay, so my vitamin. I take magnesium. Okay, girl, let me, I'm about to take some notes. Magnesium. <laughs> mm -hmm. Magnesium. I take biotin. Okay. I take elder immune. Okay. I also take B12. Oh, okay. And you got the Vital Fusion. Are those the little gummies? Yes, because I hate pills. Okay. I don't do, I don't do pills. Okay. I also I like do the that. apple cider. I didn't know they had apple cider. They got the yes. gummies apple cider, girl. Yes, yes ma'am. So you ain't got to drink the little nasty little stuff? No, you do not. Girl. And then I'm going to go to my refrigerator because I also do... I also do liquid too. You have the liquid magnesium. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, you don't have to do the pills. I also do selenium. Okay. Got it. I do the oil of oregano. So are you doing this in all of these you're consuming every single day? Is it like yes. some type of schedule? Yes, I do it every day. Black seed. Okay. They also had a vitamin B12 in a shot, too. Oh, you can nice. You it in your mouth. I do the olive leaf. Okay. Chlorophyll is very good. Some, some people, like, literally, they take this, so much of this, they don't even have to use deodorant. Oh, wow. And then I have the black elderberry vitamin drop too. Okay. Because I, like I said, I don't like pills. So I try to find ways to get my vitamins in without having to take pills. Yeah, absolutely. Especially so if I do the liquid medicine, or the like, gummy. That's nice. Okay. And what about any type of fitness tips? Okay. That you can recommend. Tips. Okay. Body strength is the best. Okay. Where, like whether you're doing push-ups, burpees, mm -hmm. jumping jacks, jump rope. Um, weights are good, but again, if you can't lift your own body, you shouldn't be picking up a weight. True. So pull true. up, chin up, if you're able to do those things. Okay, so really just moving your body, getting that moving, body weight, walking. moving your body. Walking, walking at a certain pace. Like the goal mm -hmm. is to do like at least three you know like if you're on the treadmill try to go above three or more okay okay because you got to get your heart rate pumping that's how you that's how you lose body fat if you not if your heart rate is below 120 you're not doing nothing okay okay so you got to look at your heart rate so get that heart rate, heart rate get up. that heart rate up you got to get it up Okay, well, we appreciate you sharing all your tips and giving advice to our viewers. Um, now we want to pour this back into one you. One thing I want to say about nutrition. Okay. Because people always think, oh, I got to eat salads. No, you don't. You don't. Because, see, I can't eat salads because of the, the blood medicine. I'm on. Mm -hmm. so, you, so what I eat is zucchini, squash, mushrooms. Um, bell peppers, the um, different color peppers, actually, onions, mm -hmm. lemon, stuff like that. You can make a skillet. You know how you go to the restaurant, they have these little skillets with the yeah. different... Or like a stir fry. Make you a skillet. Mm -hmm. And it's all vegetables. And you yeah. still get your nutrients. So Absolutely. people, you don't have to be consumed to salad. Okay. I'm not a salad eater, because I can't. But it's other ways to get your, you know, nutrition without eating salads. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate you pouring into us. We want to support you in your business. So if there's, if I ask you, what's one actionable step that everyone watching can take right now to support you and your business as a personal trainer, 
I know you got your fit boot camps, you got your home gyms, you got a nutritional program. If there's just one thing that everyone can do and take action to support you, what is that one thing? Um, they can go and support me at Chicago Fit Camp Makers Gym. Um, they all and can you spell to- that, Mika? Because that could be spelled a million ways. I know. <laughs> so Makers Gym is spelled M E K K A, two K. Okay. So and um, again, like I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. You know, if you would like to donate you know, and want to do an online training. Um, My online is only $5 in person. Um, If you do group training, it's only $10. Personal training is only $25. So I'm not expensive, you know what I'm saying? Because to me, it's not about the money. It's about the person. Right. You know what I'm saying? The money I need because for the equipment and my time, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. But my goal is helping people mm-hmm. and no amount of money is going to help me if you don't look like nothing right absolutely. what you look like is what's going to help me get the next customer right because me training you and you still look the same what am i doing exactly what are you doing you know okay so you so say your online training is five dollars yeah so what does that include um, for the online training, it is, it's, is that like certain days a week or? Yeah. Um, my online, I do two days a week. Okay. Tuesdays and Thursday where you can see me and interact with me. Or I also can send you videos. I send you five different workouts, only $5 and you can do it at your leisure. Okay, Mika. I know you, I trust you. We done been through a lot together, honey. Um, (laughs) You know I'm an emotional eater, and I still got some weight to lose. So I'm committing myself to you right now that we about to do this. I'm going to listen. I ain't going to be (laughs) hard-headed. I'm going to be your next client so we can lose this weight, girl. I saw you do it. I know I know for a fact you know what you're talking about. Because not only did you do it yourself, but you also did it with some health challenges. And that's yeah. something that I'm going through right now. And all personal trainers don't understand that. Yeah. So after we get off this call, we're about to make this happen. We're about to go on this personal um, fitness journey. I'm about to be a client, honey. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. I need to be saying, am I ready? <laughs> Do you have any final comments or anything that we may have missed out on before we jump off? Um, May is Lupus Awareness Month. And again, I am a lupus warrior. And right now, it's no cure. Mm-hmm. So, and lupus attacks every major organ. Yeah. And I don't know if you can see my face right now, but I am in a lupus flare right now. But... I don't mind the challenges that God has put me in because it made me a stronger person. And it's given me the opportunity to show people no matter what, you can still get up. As long as I have breath in my body, I'm going to keep up and move. As long as I can move my legs, because you see my legs when they, when my, my kidneys get crazy and I swell up my, Mm -hmm. I look like I have two legs in one. So as long as I can move, I'm moving my body. So as far as the donating, how can we donate? Well, uh, right now we are doing donations for the Lupus of America. Um, You can go to either my PayPal at Lamika at Yahoo. It's L-M-E-K-K-A at Yahoo.com. I also do cash app. It's um, the dollar sign. Coach Mika, C O A C H M E K K A. So, those are the ways you can help. You can send donations. It's going straight to the Lupus of America Foundation. Um, I'm also a part of the first ever Lupus sorority called Lambda Sigma Sigma Lupus oh, wow. Sorority Incorporated. I was inducted last year. It has been awesome being around 
other women who go through what I go through. Mm -hmm. Every Monday, I have a lupus workout in the morning for all the lupus. A lot of people can't walk because, again, lupus literally attacks everything. It's people who kidney failure, heart failure, lung failure. It's, it's really, it's horrible, you know, and they glorify cancer, but not lupus. Right. So, and we're trying to get the world to know lupus is really killing a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. So. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time today. I'll be definitely posting all of the information on how people can reach you, support your business, and also donate to your cause with the Lupus Foundation. Um, again, I appreciate you for joining me. I'm going to get ready to jump off. I want to thank all of you all for tuning in. My name is Sierra Thurman. I'm your favorite real estate agent, and I'm here to help you build a legacy that moves you. Thank you, Mika, for joining me. Thank you. Have a good day. Don't forget, right. we about to do this. All right. I'm okay, ready. Okay, now. All okay. right. Bye-bye. <laughs>